My name is Wyatt Hart. I'm with St. Augustine Beer Brewing Solutions. And tonight I'd like to show you how to make wine from concentrate. To be more specific, we're going to be using Welch's Frozen Concentrate Concord variety. I'm going to be mixing this with approximately five pounds of sugar. It's plain cane sugar. I'm going to be using some Red Star Pasture Red Yeast, which I've already mixed with about one quarter of a cup of warm water, approximately 100 to 103 degrees. And I'll get started here. Of course, we've sterilized all of our equipment before we started. First thing I'm going to do is add the concentrate to my carboy. These concentrates are 11.5 ounces. This is going to make a medium bodied wine. I'm using six of them. It's going to turn out to be some pretty good wine. We made this wine before. The first time that we made it, it took second place in a wine tasting, homemade wine tasting in Jacksonville, Florida. Took second place and that was in 1999. So it's fairly easy and turned out fairly good for us. Of course everyone's got their own particular taste in wine, but we like this one. Six containers of grape, uh, grape concentrate added. And we'll add our sugar water mixture, which is five pounds of sugar mixed in with warm water to dilute it.
bear in mind you're making your own wine. You're following a recipe, you want to follow it as closely as possible. There's no guarantee that your wine is going to turn out exactly like someone else's does. Depends on the grapes, the amount of sugar in the grapes, the type of yeast you're using, the amount of yeast you're using, the temperature that it sets at. To make wine consistently, you need to keep all these variables as close together as you can to the original. If you're trying to make a product that you're going to sell, these would be extremely important. But if you're just making wines for you and your family and friends to enjoy, it's not that important. Don't worry about it. Any number of people have told me they're afraid to make wine or beer. Is they're afraid that it's not going to turn out just like they want it to. Well, guess what? You're going to have to do it and practice at it to get good at it. It's like anything else. Every recipe, you're going to have to tweak it a little bit to your own particular taste. I don't know how many people there are on earth, but every one of them's got a different taste. That doesn't make yours wrong. It doesn't make theirs right. And the whole art of it is to make a wine that you like, your family likes. This wine you're going to want to allow to set for 27 to 30 days depending on the temperature, type of yeast, amount of sugar. You'll know when it's done cooking off. You'll done when it's, know when it's done fermenting whenever it stops bubbling out of your, your aircraft. sure there'll be people who'll tell you to watch this film that I don't know what I'm doing, but I learned it from my father, and like he told me, he says, I can't teach you how to make wine, I can only show you how I make wine, and he made pretty good wine. days you're going to want to rack this wine off into another container. The reason is you have yeast settling at the bottom. All that is the yeast settling at the bottom from the amount of sugar it's eating and the other solids in the wine. The longer you let it set the better it'll be but after about about 30 days or so it should be ready for you to start sampling there to find out what your wine is going to taste like. Some people let it age for a long period of time. Some people drink it as soon as it's made. We've done a little bit of both. We bottled it. I've got some bottles from 2002.
obviously they weren't that good or they would have been drained by now. I'm thinking that's about as much as I want in that bottle this time. Realizing it's a five gallon bottle and I'm not filling it to the top, but I really don't want to make that much of a mess with it. Like I say, when it goes to overflow from the foam and fermentation. Really important thing to do is to make sure you sterilize all of your equipment as best you can. Use one step cleaner or commercial oxygen cleaner is what I find best. It's never let me down, but I have seen people use Clorox and other cleaners, and theirs turned out well also. But sanitation, keeping everything clean as possible is the real secret to making wine or beer or any other kind of alcoholic beverage. Different yeast will give you different taste. Siphon the wine, what we did was we filled our hose and our bottle filter up with clean water, trapped the air inside of it by making sure that the airlock was trapped, and put it into the bottle of wine that we're making, and then allowing the water to bleed out into an empty container like this trash can. Uh, you don't want to use your mouth to siphon this. It's not Georgia credit card. I've seen some people do that. Best case scenario, it still looks terrible.
key on my three scale hydrometer. My reading here is 1.970. appreciate y'all watching this video and I really hope y'all make some wine it's very easy to do as you see and it turns out good we'll have making wine from fresh fruits and later on videos but for now I'd like to thank y'all again and ask y'all to come see us on our website at St. Augustine Beer Brewing Solutions and we're also located St. Augustine, Florida at the flea market at 